Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Industrial Automation Lego Minute. And on contrary to what your boyfriend tells you, that does not, just the tip and only for a minute, does not constitute sound family planning advice. These are industrial timer relays. What they do is you set them for on time and off time and they will fire a relay depending on how you set it. These ones, as we can plainly see, Let's go over this, have a look at this, okay. Chinesium font, Times New Roman font, 12 volts DC. I got a 120 volt DC one as well. Same lot number. So, smells like shit, tastes like shit, spit it the fuck out. These are 10 bucks. 10 bucks from the usual suspects, mouths, dollar around a pound land. You can tell they're junk. You can tell they're junk. How junky are they? We're going to have a peek. If this sounds rehearsed, it's because it is. I recorded the whole Jesus thing without the mic on. <laughs> so, all our little surprises and all, all our little fun anecdotes, all right out the window because uh, I done did this before. Okay, so here we got the 12 volter on 12 volts we are going to plug it in and show you how she chooches at least i will save time on editing if it chooches why you no chooch not perfect it's fucked now I must have cooked it ah for fuck's sakes Pin one, let's hit the reset here. Pin one to pin three, nothing. Okay, let's hit the pause. Pin one to pin four, fuck. Okay, well, I cooked her by taking her apart. So what happens is this guy counts up on this side, then once it hits whatever setting you're in here in the manual setting, nice uh, click action. You can't even buy these anymore from reputable sources because they don't make them <laughs> this analog. I mean, analog is cool, but... So, we set the time that we want it on and we set the time we want it off, and it just counts. It comes with a, a relay base, a standard relay base. It goes on a DIN connection. It's a, a rail, a truncated U-rail cross-section, and that snaps right in place. Or, if you're feeling particularly craftsman like you can cut a square hole in a panel and this can be a panel mount device like so as we can see it comes with all the accreditations safety and so forth however having looked at this well let's have a look at it because you haven't looked at it I have we can see here right off the hop not tea bag construction boxed PCBs and then a cute little feature here in order to rigidify this they box it in all the PCBs and then connect it with solder to make the box connections and it is rather rigid although it's probably <laughs> not the best and safest way to do things uh, to use the actual conductive PCB that you're using to do the electrical work to also do the mechanical work I'm pretty sure there's a rule there somewhere that you're not allowed to do that. But what do I know? I mean, it does have the proper stamps. So you would never ever use this in an industrial environment. You would use the $150 Omron one uh, because, like I said before, nobody ever got fired for buying Cat or Komatsu or IBM you don't stick your neck out needlessly to save the company a couple of bucks when it could cost the company the, the cost benefit isn't there that you need a, a chain of custody and it needs to be a skookum part this you're buying for 10 bucks not a skookum part you lose your job over this so we want to make sure all we want to do is make sure that this is safe enough to use in your house for a little home automation projects that you're kind of you know you're standing by you don't let it run all alone because 
you don't trust it. As we can see here on the input, there is no fusing whatsoever. None. No fusing. Here, I looked up this IC that's controlling everything. According to the Google Translate, it, it's Chinese dick pills. We can see the relay is salvaged. It's salvaged out of something else. So this is secondary market in Shenzhen. You know, just the cheapest, cheapest stuff they can get. But having said that, everything else, all the soldering, all the connections are nice and solid. Uh, seven segment, four digit display in here with the dropper resistors over here. No, over here. And a whole bunch of diodes for each one of these switches that's counting up or down. We got a little capacitor here so that when the field, the coil for the uh, relay that actually switches the relay off and on, that's an electromagnet. When that field collapses, there's an inductive voltage spike. That's what this is here to eliminate so we don't fry this guy right here. But as you can see, very, very minimalist design. Is it good enough for, for my purposes at 12 volts? Yes. Fused properly. Got to fuse it properly. 12 volts, no problem. Let's have a look at the 120 volt. Completely exactly the same, only difference is different color relay because <laughs> that, that was the relay color of whatever equipment that they pulled this out of. And we have dropper, no, not dropper resistors, dropper capacitors. So this is just a capacitive voltage dropping circuit with bleed down resistors here. Nothing very, very crusty method of doing it. There is no overcurrent protection whatsoever. And if you plug this into the grid, even though it says it's accredited and you burn something down or you hurt somebody, you'd be in a fucking world of hurt. So it's really not worth the money to try and save a few bucks. That's what you get when you buy a $10 Omron knockoff relay and base. As I said, this would be 200 bucks, 150 US if you were to buy the relay base and the proper Omron switch. That's just how much they cost. If it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. We'll figure out what we can use this in. Maybe some sort of ratchet testing device. Um, well, not anymore because it's fucked. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.